Wood. Uh, I was the air vehicle lead uh, uh, for the Global Hawk program during the Block 20 and Wolf expansion. Had very unique aspects to it because uh, obviously the Global Hawk is an automated air vehicle. And uh, so we would plan for missions that were well, we built up from four hours to, I think it ended up being 33 hour mission at the end. Um, and so you had to plan for uh, not only being in the control room for a long period of the day, I don't remember maybe we settled around six hours or something like that, and then shifted people in and out. So you had to have good communication between uh, one team to the next team so that you could uh, get through the whole flight as they got longer and longer. For my time in the Global Hawk, so I joined the Global Hawk community in 2015, where I started out as a pilot with them, and then proceeded through as a pilot, became an electronic combat officer as well to help us figure out how to uh, be more survivable in SATCOM, either denied or low availability areas as well, uh, and then continued on to operational tests for the RT4. The operational perspectives and then also the limitations that the, the platform had because it was thrust into a national need uh, really provided me a perspective as a tester after test pilot school coming into the 452nd about how important it is to bring in your operational context, bring in the, the experience that you have flying the line performing missions with the platform and ensuring that the next level systems or the next level platforms or whatever else comes down the line is, is the, to the best of your ability ready to do that next mission or that next fight. Also anticipating that we're going to be using, we're going to be asking those future systems to do things that they were not originally intended to do as well, which is an interesting, interesting line to balance. The legacy of the, of the RQ4 is bringing in aut autonomy into aviation into particularly mil military aviation bringing in early lessons learned on how in the world do i ask a and we'll use whatever words that make sense at the time um, maybe a semi-autonomous whatever we might want to call the rq4 uh, definitions are for another conversation but a platform that has arguably a high degree of autonomy because i don't have a necessarily a throttle and stick to interact with that platform and experimenting and experiencing out in the real world what is required Required, what is asked for various levels of autonomous platforms that helped inform I believe those lessons those experiences are helping inform future autonomous platforms that are also coming down the line as well Global Hawk may be going away um, it's it's done its duty I guess um, but uh, I think there's other things out there or there will be other things out there in the same vein uh, they won't be remotely piloted. They'll be autonomous air vehicles. You know, we're hearing a lot about that these days. And Globalock and its predecessors, actually, um, in uh, Ryan Aeronautical, um, are really the legacy of, of what we're doing. So uh, all of those older programs and how, how we've done things in those programs uh, should be very educational for the people coming along doing these newly autonomous air vehicles that we're looking at to go with the next generation of aircraft.